Project 3.1.5, Chump Final. This is the final video of the four-stage project Cheap Homebrew Understandable Minimal Processor. The final stage also oversaw critical updates such as the enabling of the load pin of the program counter and enhancements such as the paging pins on the EEPROMs. The 4-bit computer is meant to mimic uh, elements of computers that operate in today's society. These are a clock source, a program source, an operations base, and data storages. Each of these elements are covered in their own project subsections. This is the circuit diagram of the 4-bit processor. It's made of, of an extremely long list of parts which are not all included in this diagram. Just a little note of a slight defect, the I.O. pins on the control EEPROM are wired backwards. The foundation of CHUMP is the clock source. This is created by the 555 timers, a NAND combinational circuit, and the program counter. The clock pulse is also used in the D latch components, the address register, and the accumulator. What the program counter does is count incrementally with each rising edge of the clock pulse feeding into the new number. This number is sent to the program EEPROM. The program EEPROM decodes that 4-bit incrementing clock source and turns it into a set of instructions consisting of an instruction that goes to the control ROM and a constant that goes to the multiplexer. On this diagram, the multiplexer is near the upper right-hand corner of this diagram. It has its outputs feeding into the ALUB ports, the program counter, and the address register. The multiplexer lets an operand through from program EEPROM or a value that's stored to RAM, and that value is used within the circuit as, to either define an address, an operating value for the ALU, or an instruction label for the program counter. From the control ROM, it takes the opcode that is sent from the program ROM and turns it into a set of instructions for the ALU, the address register in RAM, and the accumulator. The accumulator instruction from the control ROM is simply an enable instruction. For RAM via the address register, it's an indication of whether it's reading or writing, and for the ALU, it indicates the operation. Most of the operations take place within the ALU. It performs arithmetic and logic operations to change numbers and perform operations with them that are similar to computers performing mathematical operations. The value produced by the ALU is sent to the accumulator, stored for another instruction for the ALU, or to be stored to RAM for another use later in the program. Other possible instructions could alter the instruction label with the program counter, or assign values to RAM, or the alternative, take values from RAM and use it for another instruction. The base instructions for the 4-bit processor are load, which puts a value straight into the ALU without an operation, add, which adds the value in the accumulator to the value that's, that you assign, subtract, which does the same thing but subtraction, store to, which stores a value in the accumulator to RAM, read, which reads a value in RAM, or reads an address in RAM, um, then you have two free space instructions, one that is for a constant and one that is for a memory value, and then there is, um, there is go to, which assigns a new value to the program counter, and if zero, which is a conditional statement, if the accumulator value is zero, the program can reset to a new instruction. That's the basic rundown of a 4-bit processor and the components required to operate a computer system. I'll post a new video once I can get this build to operate fully, but right now I must have some wiring issues because I'm getting very random values from the program ROM, the control ROM, and the RAM. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for more.